What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down some of the best routes that you can run in one-on-ones to create separation. So I hope this video helps you guys out. hope it could teach you a few new things. But also, fellas, if you are a wide receiver or quarterback and would like to get some work in with us this offseason, we are going to be traveling out to 10 more states across the country for two-day-long QB and wide receiver training camps. Next up on our camp tour, we'll be coming out to the DMV area. That camp is completely sold out, but then we'll be heading out to St. Louis, Missouri, Honolulu, Hawaii, Boston, Massachusetts, Cleveland, Austin, Seattle, Newark, Denver, and Los Angeles. So if you guys are local to any one of those cities and would like to get some work in with us for two whole days of training, check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to have you out to one of our camps. Let's get started with this video. So now, first things first here, this first route, this is going to be more so like a release that I feel you guys can learn, use. So this is going to be for a route like a slant, a five yard under, which is what this wide receiver is running, but it is going to be a hesitation slide into a diamond release. Now, something that all great wide receivers can do is is make their releases look the same. You look at all the best route runners in the NFL, Devontae Adams, Justin Jefferson, Stephon Diggs, everything that they do off the line is calculated and it looks somewhat similar because that is how you're unpredictable and you can get into a DB's head. And that's what ultimately gets you open. So let's play this first example here from this wide receiver. So he comes off his little hesitation slide, accelerates up, and is able to win on that five yard under easy. And this is an easy, easy route to win on in one-on-ones. So if you guys are running a fade route and you have an inside shade DB and maybe you're trying to change the tempo on him, maybe you're trying to get his feet to settle, get him to sit to the inside and think that you're running a slant, you go take off and run a fade. A great release for that would be a hesitation slide or skip and go. So how many times are DBs are taught this, that anytime that you see a wide receiver do this little hezzy move to the outside or a slide, sit to the inside and expect slant because, you know, you see the overhyped slide release nowadays where guys will slide to the outside, give a fake and run a slant and they'll make the DB look foolish, right? So DBs are taught when you see that slide, sit to the inside. So if you actually have to run a route like a five yard under, like a slant, this is a release to use on that. So we have to make it look the same though. So we give this little hesitation move and then we burst up to the outside. This is a great release to use for that fade route. You hesitate, get the DB to settle, then we go. Maybe I've ran it a few times. Maybe I'm backside on a play and I do that slide and go and I get that DB to feel my speed. That can set up this slide and diamond release. So a diamond release is like if you're coming off the line just regularly, right? Just out of a stance. A diamond release is where you take three hard steps on like a 45 degree angle or at this DB's outside shoulder and hip to flip his hips to the fade and then we slip back underneath and run a slant. So again, you could pair that with that hesitation slide release. So this wide receiver comes off the ball. He does the same as he slide, same speed, same everything. His hips and shoulders are committed. He's running in full stride. He's running hard for three steps. And you see what that does to that DB. There comes a point in every single rep where a DB has to open up his hips and honor the fade. It's on the wide receiver whether he sells it good enough or not with his body language, with that stride, and with that speed. So many wide receivers will try to do a regular diamond release or this type of release, and they'll take choppy steps. They'll raise their pad level up before they cut. They turn their hips and their shoulders before they make that break. You got to be fully committed with your hips, with your shoulders, and with your speed because that is what will get that DB to open up the gate. Because trust me, fellas, DBs are taught to be disciplined and do not open up the gate. And if I don't make him open up by selling the route, he will not open up, especially a good DB. So let's play this again, full speed one more time. So a great release to use in one-on-ones is that slide, hesitation, skip, or slide, and then into that diamond release. Okay, so now this next release I want to talk about is a great move to use in one-on-ones when you get a DB who maybe isn't playing the most realistic type of coverage. So I'm sure everybody has seen all of those videos where, you know, a wide receiver will line up and it's t-shirt and shorts, one-on-ones, which I can't stand, number one anyways, but they'll line up t-shirt and shorts one if you make it unrealistic, right? I think one-on-ones are a great tool. If you treat it realistically, that will get you the most out of it. But you'll get DBs who will just come up to the line, grab you, and just jam you. And they'll just lunge at you, right? Now, in a real game situation, if you got a DB on the line who wants to be physical, he still has to honor the snap count. He still has to react on you. But in one-on-ones, this quarterback never goes on two. He's not going to give the hard count, right? So sometimes the DBs have an advantage. As soon as the quarterback says hike, they'll lunge off the ball before this wide receiver even moves. And again, in a real game, if we go on two, that's five yards. He's off sides. That's 
It's an easy five-yard gain. And that's what an offense will do if they got a, a DB who's jumping the count like that. And another thing as well, there's no threat of the run game. What if this guy j- lunges at this wide receiver, chokes him off the line, and jams him all the way back five yards, and we run a sweep to the outside, and that corner ain't there? That's an easy gain for at least eight yards, right? And that corner is probably never going to do that again in a real game. Now, in one-on-ones, there's no threat of that. So it's not the most realistic coverage. But as a wide receiver, we still got to have a plan for it. Because you might be in a camp setting where there's, you know, scouts there, college coaches there, and you got to go up against a DB like that. And they're going to want to see if you can get off of press. You never want to be that receiver, even though it's crap, who gets jammed all the way to the sideline. So a great release to use, and I only like this really in certain game situations, but mainly one-on-ones, is a step-back release. So you see how this wide receiver comes off the ball? He steps back. He creates space for himself, and that allows him to create separation and get up into his route, and then obviously makes a hell of a catch right here. But the thing is, though, he created the space, and that is the name of the game when you're in one-on-ones. If you guys can create space with the DB and then eat up that space by using that step back, mission accomplished, you did your job. Now, in a real game, a lot of people hate on this type of release. And I understand the criticism because when guys do this step back in a game, sometimes they'll step back and they do all this movement behind the line, all these pointless steps, wasted movement. That DB is doing his job when you do that in a real game and you waste time. If you guys are going to do this step back, you have to play it exactly like how this wide receiver played it. You guys step back, you create space, and then you eat up the cushion and get up into your route quickly. That's when you guys got full pads on and it's a real game scenario. In one-on-ones, you can do that step back, create some space for yourself and go. I still recommend you doing it quickly, but I'm just giving you this tool so you guys know what to do when you're faced against that DB because everybody at some point will be, right? We had a camp a couple weeks ago that was in Dallas, right? And there's a DB who's real physical. And a lot of wide receivers, what they would do off the line is they would freeze. They would not step back. They wouldn't create space for themselves. And all that DB would have to do is get hands and then you're completely disrupted. The timing of the route, the spacing of the route, everything's off because they didn't come up to the line with a plan. But if you come up to the line with a plan against that DB who's real physical, step back, create some space, then let's go create on the route. But you got to give yourself some space to operate. So that's why I wanted to talk about this, fellas. It's a great release to use in this one-on-one situation just to help you get off that physical press so you could actually showcase what you can do with your routes. So let's play this again full speed one more time. Great job of that wide receiver hitting that step back and then winning on that fade and obviously great job finishing the play. Okay, so now, a great move that you guys can use in any type of man coverage situation, not just one-on-ones, but obviously in one-on-ones it is man, so you could definitely use it, but in any man coverage situation on any outside breaking route. So I like this move on a 10-yard out. I like it on a corner. I like it on a comeback. I like it on pretty much anything outside breaking. I don't like it on anything inside breaking because it's kind of pointless on an inside breaking route, but that is a peak back move. So I'm sure some of you have heard of this before. Some of you tried this before, and a lot of you probably do it incorrectly. So we're going to talk about it on this. So this wide receiver takes an outside release on an out route, peaks back, breaks this thing off, and then is obviously able to get a ton of separation on this DB. So this peak back move is this right here, where he's peeking and looking over his inside shoulder. And this is as good as this move can get. So many wide receivers, what they'll do is before they love to use this on a comeback, they love to use this on an out route, is they'll peek back, but when they peek back, they lean back. Their pad level raises. They start to lean back. Their stride starts to shorten because their body is tilted backwards. That's an indicator to the DB that you're not catching a fade. You're trying to use a move. We are peeking back to try to sell like that ball is dropping right over the top. So when I put my foot in the ground, that DB has no choice or no chance to react. So when you peek, it's a glance. You want to glance over this inside shoulder. You never want to be that guy who comes off, is running with good speed, then starts to peek back and slow down. We want to maintain the same arm drive, the same stride, the same body language, and it is literally just a glance over that shoulder before we make the cut. Now, another mistake that wide receivers will do on this is that they'll start to peek back, but they'll peek back right before they cut. So like they'll keep their head down all the way until the last step of this break, and then they start to peek back and look. A DB is not supposed to be looking up at your shoulders and your head anyways. He's supposed to be watching your hips. So if you guys do that, and then at the last second you peek, that's not enough to get him to think fade. He's still going to be right on your hip when you make that cut. You have to hold your eyes there for at least a few steps. And it's not super black and white. It's not one of those things like, hey, for two steps only or for three steps only. You could definitely train it like that. 
but you just need to make sure that you hold your eyes there for at least a couple yards and at least a couple steps to actually sell that fade. So make sure, fellas, we don't raise up. We're not looking, hey, we don't raise up. We're not shortening the stride. We're not stopping the arms. And we don't look at that last possible second. So let's play this again full speed. Peak back move, fellas. It's a great thing to use in all one-on-one -on -one situations on any outside breaking route. Okay, so now, next example I want to show here, and this is a great, great route for you guys to run, is going to be a curl route versus inside shade press. Now, I know a lot of you are probably thinking like, well, a curl would be an awkward route to run against inside shade press because you have to come back to the ball, and it's an inside turn, obviously, a comeback for those of you that don't know the difference. A comeback is a turn outside, a curl is a turn inside. So a curl, when you're turning inside and the DB's inside shade, that's kind of tricky, right? But if you have good hips and you can sell the route correctly, it is actually a great, great route to get you a lot of space in a one-on-one -on -one situation. So let's play this full speed. Let's watch what this wide receiver does. He attacks leverage, breaks up to the outside, drops the hips, and then is able to come back to the inside. So on all your routes, there's always something that we have to sell. Just like on that peak back move, what are we trying to sell? We're trying to sell fade right? We're trying to sell fade with my body language, with my stride and with my speed. I'm trying to make this dude think that I'm going deep. Everything's a fade until it's not. Now, when guys do that, they struggle at the top of the break. They struggle to be able to change direction while they are actually selling fade. And that's what I want you to get out of this video. So there are two points of emphasis when you guys are selling fade that you want to try to get to. Number one, you got to be violent with your level change. So by level change, I mean drop of the hips. Everybody knows on a curl route, a comeback, a five-yard hitch, a 12-yard stop that you have to drop your hips at the break point because that's what helps you slow down. But a lot of guys struggle dropping your hips violently. So they'll burst up to the route, they'll get to the top of this thing, and they'll slowly sink their hips, and they'll beat the drum with their hands, take all these choppy steps with their feet. But remember, in man coverage, where's the DB's eyes supposed to be? It's supposed to be looking at your hips. So if you have a slow drop of your hips, the DB's going to have more time to react. But if you have a violent and quick drop of your hips, and you actually change levels, I call it snapping down, you get to the exact same spot, it's just faster. But this is where guys struggle because they don't have the correct mechanical position of their body to do that. They try to break super hard, but they don't get low enough. Maybe they don't get forward enough with their pad level and they're not able to do it. So mechanically, this is where you should be. Number one, you got to think of it like at your hips. You're not bending at your waist, falling forward. You're not trying to get your chest over your knees. You're trying to sit into a chair. So when you guys break, think of it like you're at school and you're sitting your butt down into a chair. Now, the other mistake that guys will make, and this is why they can't do this, is that when they sit in the chair, their chest will be straight up in the air. So they'll almost be leaning back, weight will be on their heels, and they'll start to drift. They'll either fall back out of the route, they'll turn out of the route, and they'll slip because their feet will get outside their frame because they're not in a balanced position. We got to be violent, we have to get low, but we also need to be balanced. And balance comes from you guys literally trying to touch your chin to your knee. Now, this is where guys will lean too far forward. Their chin will go past their knee. Their chest will go past their knee. We have to sit in the chair and pull that string from my chin to my knee. Because if I can self-fade and I get to that string pull position violently, honestly, fellas, very, very tough for this DB to react. Because now I'm in a position where I can stop I can stop on a dime because my hips are violent and I can make a sharp cut, which makes it harder for the DB to recover. You drift on your cut, you snap down, but we don't get low enough. We drift forward. You're drifting right into a DB. And if a DB is any good, he works on these breaks just as much as we do. So we need to make sure it's a sharp cut. It's a quick cut and we sell the fade until the last possible second. That is textbook here from this wide receiver. Let's watch the thing again, full speed one more time. Great job pushing fade and then snapping down on that dime to create that space. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. Always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, if you would like to come out to one of our 10 remaining off-season QB and wide receiver training camps, we'd love to have you out to one of our 10 remaining camps. All spots are limited. All camps will sell out. So we appreciate all the support from you guys. Check out that very first link in the description below. I'll see you next time.